Tuesday interview. Every single Tuesday, we're here to connect as the mortgage coach best to just get better. Uh, you know, my name's Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach, and every Tuesday, I'm interviewing someone amazing. Super excited. I've got Mr. Todd Duncan today, my mentor, my friend, someone that has been just huge in the mortgage coach world. What's up, my brother? Hey, man. It's always great to be with you, and Tuesdays are a good day to start off strong. So looking forward to our time together, Dave. Yeah, no, I, I am too, and I don't know that you need much of an introduction to this community, although I'll do a little bit of that in just a minute, because uh, I think, you know, one thing that's super impressive is, you know, how you continue to reinvent yourself to be relevant. I mean, you know, I learned how to be a great loan officer from you and on your stage, and here we are 25 years later, and you're still as relevant and as valuable as you were 25 years ago. So uh, congratulations, Matt Todd. Uh, I do want to tell everybody that we are recording this, and it will be in our YouTube channel. So in our YouTube channel, we've got Skype interviews, we've got some of our all-time best, and today's Tuesday call will be uploaded. Uh, as I said, today, it's all about Todd Duncan. Next Tuesday, I've got Craig Sully, a great uh, mortgage leader who's been on the sales mastery stage, just like about every top producer. You know, I'm always bragging at Mortgage Coach how we have 34% of the top 1%. But um, you could probably say that you've got 80% of the top 1% <laughs> that, that you've either influenced or they've been on sales mastery at one point. So uh, I, it's not often that I'm on the phone with someone who can one-up me there. Uh, also, also, I've got a great real estate agent that I'm going to be interviewing, Nicole Solaris. Uh, she's actually one of Jeremy Forcier's realtor partners. Mind-blowing story. You know, I mean, this – she did, she's, I think she's been in the business going on her fourth year and, you know, she's doing 147 sides, you know, and last year she did 70, you know, which most agents never get there. And to do that in a few years, is just mind blowing. So great interview. Um, so, so Todd, I want to kick off today's call almost as a follow up from our, our last call together. This was a quote that you had um, last time we interviewed you where you said, high trust story selling with Mortgage Coach is the greatest disruptive strategy you can unleash on your market. And you even did some scripting around that. Um, I, I recommend anyone on this call listen to that. We will put a link to that below in the description of this YouTube channel if you're watching the recording. But, you know, Todd, I mean, one of the biggest challenges to that quote and to what you and I were talking about is just that everybody's got to change their behavior. They've got to unlearn something and relearn something, you know, so – it's, it's, it's one thing that there's a great, you know, story selling matters, using mortgage coach matters, doing high trust selling matters, but, but learning, unlearning and relearning is pretty tough stuff, right, my friends? Yeah, I think uh, ingrained habits are the thing, you know, they're the anchor in the mud for most of us. And, you know, the digital world is changing so fast today, Dave, that we've got to be able to unlearn a lot of those negative habits or even habits that used to work yesterday that, you know, will not work today. And I think, you know, one of the great opportunities for, for changing habits and learning, unlearning and relearning is going to be in the area of digital trust and how do we create that in the high trust ecosystem with mortgage coach with total cost analysis and do it in a way where the consumers um, are feeling compelled to act. And at the end of the day, you know, that's what the, the future is going to be all about. It's how do you keep high trust high? How do you keep digital effective? And, uh, and how do you do that in a way that optimizes conversion? That's what it, what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. So I'm going to walk through a couple slides. Cause this, these are slides that I, I use all the time when I'm meeting with these suites. And every time I do it, everybody's nodding their head. You know, they're kind of like, yeah, techno we need better technology and we need to add new technology. But the biggest challenge isn't that we need new technology, is that we need to get the human beings to use the technology we have. And there's a gap, you know, where we are today, where we want to be. And then the other, the other thing is that technology is moving super fast. You know, I mean, Rocket Mortgage, you know, was like the gun shot. The industry is chasing, you know, the rocket, the digital mortgage, but it's it's not like it's a slow race. I mean, it's like a sprint. And so, you know, these are some beliefs that I have, Todd. You know, I'd love to hear your take on it. Um, but how do we how do we help our you know our sales force, loan officers, get go where the puck is going? 
And part of that is technology integrations. So, you know, not only do we want to provide the consumer and the realtor with this beautiful consumer experience, but we also need to give loan officers integrated experiences. And so we're seeing a lot of integration. And then I think the place where you and I play really well together, Todd, is just helping, you know, the sales force, helping loan officers just learn faster, accelerate that learning curve. And, and, and I think that's what makes our partnership so amazing is high trust selling plus mortgage coach and other technologies is really how everybody needs to get there. So, so, so I, I don't know, Todd, I mean, you talk to a lot of top producers and, and I know every time, you know, we talk, you want the same thing I want. We want loan officers to convert more effectively. We want them to, you know, have more effective conversations with agents. You know, we, we've given like scripting, like there's no tomorrow. It's like, we've given you like, Hey, if you've got a family in your office, like Jay Crow here, someone who's been on sales mastery, you know, this is how you do it. Um, Denise Donahue, someone who's been on sales mastery stage countless times, you know, so it's like some of these loan officers are doing it. They're high trust selling. They're using mortgage coach, you know, but not enough of them are doing it. So, I mean, any, any thoughts, Todd, um, I'm going to, I'm going to actually stop sharing slides because I do think, uh, you are so compelling in person. Let's <laughs> let's kind of let's kind of jump on stage, and and kind of speak to that. You know, what are you seeing that really differentiates the best of the best in today's market? I think the thing that's most important for everybody, uh, but more, most particularly for the mortgage coach community, is the idea that. Um, you know, we have three distinct populations out there that need real estate financing. We have the baby boomers, we have the Gen Xers, and then we have the millennials. And I think what's interesting to your comment earlier, Dave, about Rocket Mortgage and everything digital is that um, it doesn't have, at least at this juncture, according to a lot of the futurist experts like Peter, Peter Diamandes, that it doesn't have the threat of making the high value, high advice, um, LO obsolete. If anything, it, it complements what we're trying to do. So the, the baby boomer generation is not ever going to disengage from the human connection because that's how they grew up and they aren't going to embrace the digital connection because that's not what they have done. Uh, the Gen Xers are somewhere in between and that represents a good population of people to, you know, to, to do business with. And about half that group is leaning more towards the low digitalization and half that group is leaning towards high digitalization. And then if you look at the, the millennials, the millennials grew up on, on digital and they're highly influenced by digital technology. But the interesting thing about the millennials is that they desire deep human connection. So we have a pretty good scorecard going on right now, depending on, on kind of where you're at as an originator on whether or not digital is in your head going to be a tool that allows you to elevate the value propositions that you give in the marketplace, or if digital is going to be a mental anchor to you. And what I would like the industry to start to realize is that across the board with 145 million people that uh, that that want the human experience in a clear and distinct way. What digital does is it supports the transaction. What digital uh, puts out as a threat is if all you have is digital and you don't have emotional connection, you will not use digital effectively to increase conversion. And at the end of the day, Dave, I think what everybody has to be about is they have to be about how are they converting at the highest level possible. And, and hopefully we'll be able to get into some of the reasons why that's critical beyond the obvious. But um, in my world today, story selling is rocking. And what that simply means is the ability for an originator to position against the competition and, 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 and pa package the competition as villain to the transaction. And what I mean by that is the, the theoretical uh, kind of position that I have is that if, if I have a highly skilled originator who embraces high trust, who embraces the total cost analysis, who embraces bringing the human connection and, and, and keeping humanity high, and then, and then incorporating digital in the deliverables of what uh, the human experience requires and desires, then conversion will be at the highest level possible. I don't see a future in which an LO can be highly effective without embracing digital, 
but also mastering high trust. So kind of my opening thoughts on that. Well, those are good opening thoughts. Uh, one thing I want to tell everybody on this call right now is, you know, a, a fo couple follow-ups that I would recommend everybody check out, and I'm going to show it on my screen right now. If you can confirm that you can see it. If, if you go to um, our YouTube channel and you click on some of the real world scripts, one, I did an interview with Todd a couple days ago. Make sure you watch that. But this interview I did with Jay Crowell around how he is blending this in-person, the most ultimate in-person experience where families are coming into his office and the way he is integrating digital is, is just a benchmark of how you should be doing it. Now, again, I'm not here to say everybody should have families come to their office, although that will be the ultimate high trust experience with the highest conversion rate. But I realize that, one, it's not realistic, and two, it's not some people's model. Um, so whether you're doing it in person or whether you're over the phone and the family is getting your advice, seeing how you listen to their goals, seeing how you're providing their options, whether you know it's all over the phone, internet, and digital, or whether it's in person, or whether it's a coffee shop, this is the playbook. So, so Todd, any anything else come to mind? You know, before we get into some of the other big ideas that we want to talk about today, that might help people um, just accelerate that learning curve, so that they're using digital within the high trust sales process. Any any tactical takeaways for everybody? Well, I, yeah, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I think that everybody needs to get their head around um, what the what what the uh, analytics are, you know, what what are the optics and in uh, conversion. And really what we need to understand is that even though technology presents an opportunity for us to not have the face to face consultation, um, I will tell you in the high trust world that the highest level of conversion happens when you are face to face and the highest level of stickiness and that would be the retention piece of a consumer to your brand and to your ecosystem will always be based on that initial first kind of connection and that first experience they have with you. So I would uh, I would say to everybody that one of the places that I would practice my my positioning and my packaging and and even rethink what might be normal and that is that people are too far away to come face to face um, I would say you still need to go for that and even though it sounds a little bit like yesterday it's interesting that about 80 percent of loan officers would put their hands up that even though that might be yesterday they never mastered it yesterday anyway and so when you think about an attorney or you think about a physician or you think about high advice people that you rely on in your life for guidance it's very rare that in those first meetings for sure, but in subsequent meetings that it is done over technology, over the phone, you know, over uh, uh, a situation in which you would not have a face-to-face -face meeting. And so I would just like you to be rethinking in the, in the digital age, it's even more critical for you to have that face-to-face -face experience. And even though we can have it with shared Skype, we can have it with FaceTime, we can have it with Hangouts and, and Adobe Connect. There's all kinds of ways to have a pseudo face-to-face -face in the real world of creating trust. And when you start to see the power of the, the ultimate ecosystem that you create with borrowers who have had a five-star experience with you, um, you won't want to do anything other than face-to-face. -face. So I would always just as an opinion drive hard for that. I would look at packaging and presenting myself in such a way that People can see the value of meeting in with me at my office, looking at the J. J. Carl, you know, mortgage office, looking at, uh, at, at what we do to, to meet people face to face and just realize that, um, and I'm going to say something right now that I need to have all of you just lock on to. The only thing that matters really from our perspective in sales is the percentage of people that you convert into a high trust, high advice, long-term relationship. And the single thing that you should be measuring is not how many conversations you have with people. The single thing you should be measuring is how many of those conversations are leading to two things. Um, a trid triggered loan submitted to, to, to processing. That's one of the things you should measure. 
And the second thing you should measure is what percentage of those loans to processing um, are funding. Those are the two main numbers that drive a successful business for you. And so everything, everything that we do, everything digital, everything from a scripts and dialogue standpoint, everything from interactive, um, even our starting questions that, that get customers engaged, everything has to be measured against what is the percentage of, of pre-qualification conversations that I have that on a day on day, month over month, year over year basis, make it to processing as a trade triggered submitted loan. That's it. And the economics on this are not only huge for you, um, they're huge for your client. So I would say that that from my standpoint, Dave, is the, the biggest thing about what you were teeing up. So, so I'd be curious to know, I mean, those are vitals, you know, think of those as success vitals. And I would just add how many leads did you get? You know, so opportunities to have a high trust, with mortgage coach conversation, how many leads, how many converted in Todd's word into a tri triggered application, and how many funded. And so if you know those three vitals, um, I would like, I, I hate to ask everybody to multitask, but I'd like you to put those in, in the question and answer section of today's call. So in Go to Meeting, we have a Q&A section. What are your vitals? Leads, opportunities to sell, um, Trend triggered apps and how many funded. If you know those three vitals, share those with Todd and I. I'm going to be curious to how many people can just rip that off. Um, hey, Dave. Todd, Dave you just, say yeah, just to add some value, share your, uh, give me controls real quick. I'm going to put a slide up because there's two okay. more vitals. Gonna, there's two more vitals. I, I'm going to, okay. And by the way, add these to your list. I'm going to give Todd a chance. And by the way, if you have questions for Todd, we, we do have, well, we think we're going to have some time for some audience questions. And then also keep in mind, you know, Todd is committed to Mortgage Coach. We're committed to him. He'll be back. So if you have questions for Todd, post them. But I want to know your vitals. And, Todd, you want to share some more ideas. Well, so, the, so there's five, and, and, the, and, the, and the five have to do with everything that, that, that you and I need every single day in our business. If we're a leader running loan officers, if we're a, a senior executive running regional teams, if we're an LO running our own personal business, um, in our high trust coaching model, we are measuring these optics every day. And if you're being coached by us, you have... Um, you have to input these figures every day and we are tracking every 24 hours what's happening in these five optical areas and if you don't complete them you get a ping at five o'clock to remind you to do it if you don't complete them at five by seven you'll get another ping we want to be able to have every single 24 hours snapshots around five optics optic number one is database conversations. This can be annual client reviews. This can be reaching out to influencers in your database. It's the number of conversations that you have decided as part of your business plan you're going to have every single day with people who have used you, who believe in you, who love you, and who trust you and can be the fastest entree point to other people that you need to do the same thing for. So database conversations is a metric you need to look at and you need to measure. The second is partner conversations. Um, most recently, three weeks ago, we completed another high trust, high trust diagnostic. Uh, 353 loan officers completed the diagnostic. Um, it is very, very interesting to see that um, only 6% of originators have active engagement with their referral partners to generate referrals on a daily and weekly basis, meaning that well over 90% are not doing this. And it's interesting, you can have a business plan, you can know how many you know, pre-call conversations you need to have, but when it comes down to where are those conversations coming from, there's only 6% of LOs in America per this last survey that actually have a discipline around generating those referrals from their partners. And that's a whole nother conversation. Then the three optics that Dave threw out there are, what are your pre-call conversations? And that's an optic that you need to know. What is that number every single day? And then you have to, you have to know specifically, um, overarchingly, how many as a percentage to those 
materialize into applications that are submitted to processing. And the minimum number in coaching is for every four pre-qualification conversations you have, one of those apps makes it to processing. Um, best practices is two and high performance is three. So that's the difference between a 25, a 50, and a 75% conversion. Then the last one is obviously loans funded and closed. And the reason why these five optics are so critical is because they will make or break you financially. And at the end of the day, we are not wanting to just increase number one and increase number two just so we can have more of number three. What we're really looking for is the relationship between number three to number four. And if we can optimize those, it'll blow your mind. So Dave, give me five seconds here. I want to I want to just pull up another uh, detail here and I'm going to show this to everybody. So let's just say. Yeah. Hey, bro. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. While you're pulling that up. So, so by the way, a number of people submitted their numbers. Uh, I'm going to pick on Danny Harani because I think Danny <laughs> was on the sales mastery, was on sales mastery stage last year. And, and here's a guy that is just insanely successful. Um, the Gaylord Hansen team is incredibly well known in the San Diego market. But he rattled this off literally while he's watching the call, 181 leads, 121 credit reports, 77 in processing, 68 fundings. So obviously that's an intimidating number for a lot of people on this call. You've heard my interview with Danny. So they're a big team. It's a mega team with a lot of people that drive an extraordinary mortgage experience. But I just want everybody, I mean, come on, let's get some more folks sharing your key metrics. Also, I uh, want to remind folks I do a lot of Skype interviews with Danny. I'll put my favorite one in the recording link below. But, but Todd, if you could rip off of that, and I know you have something else to share with us here. Well, no, so Danny, Danny's a high performer, right? And, and everybody needs to understand that the reason why we're having this conversation today is because you need to optimize the business performance you have, uh, you know, as an LO or as a team lead. And there's two things here, and it's going to be fun because I think I'm going to show something that Danny might not know. And that'll be cool, but for anybody, this is really critical. So let, watch what I do real quick. So I'm just going to th throw in a $750,000 income goal into this plan, and I'm going to put in 90 basis points of comp, and I'm going to pick an average loan amount of $350,000, and then I'm going to have a minimum pre-qual conversion rate of 25%. And I'm going to have a pull through rate of 95. Let's just change that down to 90%. And then I'm going to decide over here that I'm going to have a minimum prequal referral goal per referral partner of six. And that would be a month. So as soon as I hit this button, it populates the entire business plan. It says I've got to close $83 million. I've got to bring in $92 million. If you follow me on the bottom, my volume goals, I got to fund 238 deals. Based on my pull throughs, I've got to be able to originate 264 deals. Over here, that 264 becomes 22 deals a month, becomes five a week, becomes about one a day. One a day with that 25% conversion rate means I need to have about four conversations a day. Weekly, if I have to have five loans that are, are going to be coming in, I have to have 20 conversations. Over here, if I need to have 87 total conversations a month, and I have six is the number up here in the left that I want per partner. What the business plan says is I need 14 partners, 14 and a half partners. So we'd round that up to 15. Up here in the red, my target closing goal is 83 million. I need to get 1.1 loan every day that's going into processing. Now watch what happens here. And, then, and Dave, I'll let you tee off on this as soon as I show this, this next slide. When I said earlier that the only thing that matters is conversion, why I said that is for two reasons. One, as business owners, all of you realize it's just stupid to not have the highest conversion rate possible. If we're extending time, energy, and money and labor into lead gen and, and conversation and all of that, it doesn't make sense to have low conversion rates. It makes sense to have the highest possible. And if we can gun for the highest possible, it'll be somewhere between 25% at a minimum, which is this business plan right here, and you can see where the cursor is, but we can take it up. 
and we can take it up all the way to as high as 75%. Now that requires significant scripting, massive skills in consulting and planning and creating home loan strategy. I'm going to hit a little tab down here and it's, a, it's called the what if tab. So now we, we go to this page and we say, okay, that 25% conversion rate um, based on the optics on the previous page, I'm going to be making $70,000 a month. Watch what happens over here. So if I improve my conversion rate by 1% from 25 to 26, you can see that that actually creates an additional, let's see if I can pull this out here, it's locked. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let me just close this down just a tad here. It's a, it's a big number, everybody. It's, it's, and, 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 by, and by the way, folks, oh, you've got a lot of I put a hundred percent in. <laughs> That's the way I think, Dave. <laughs> yeah, right. Go ahead. So go, go ahead and say what you're going to say, and I just want to show everybody what happens here. Okay, so two things. The number of people have asked, "Is this being recorded?" I think I said at the beginning that yes, this is recorded. It will be in our YouTube channel. A number of people have asked for this, but you know what? I talked to Todd earlier because when he showed this to me in our pre-call, I mean, this is part of their proprietary coaching platform. So if you do want to have access to this, you know, we'll go to their website, connect with Todd. Um, you know, obviously we've recorded this so you can get the concept, but if you want to get the spreadsheet, you need to reach out to Todd and his team direct. So heads up for everybody that asked for a copy of this. Uh, anyways, Todd, I just wanted to be responsive to the questions and go ahead and finish up on this topic. Okay, so, so watch this. So if you guys as mortgage coach <clears throat> power users decide in the next 12 months, I'm going to increase my conversion rate by just shy of a percent a month. So eight tenths of so 10% for the year. So I'm going to type in 10% on this improvement and I'm going to hit enter. And I want you to look <clears throat> current monthly income, $69,000. If I simply increase my conversion rate by 10%, my new monthly income is $96,000 based on all the metrics we put on the previous page. Check this out. A 10% improvement in conversion rate will increase your monthly income by $27,000. If I take that $27,000, which is new money from improving my business skills and conversion, and I invest that with a compounded rate of return at 6%, that 10% improvement is worth just shy of $2 million extra dollars for me as an asset in five years. In 10 years, if I change nothing else, that 10% improvement is worth $4.5 million. We know people that can increase their conversion rate by 25% in a given year. Watch what happens here. Now we're talking in 10 years of having an $11 million asset base from improving one business discipline. Why Mortgage Coach is so critical, why High Trust is so critical, why the conversations you're having with your borrowers are so critical is because if you convert, and this, just add these two up, if you convert at one out of two, you're gonna take your monthly income from 69 grand to 138 grand, this $69,000 differential, look how much money that is worth to you. So in the digital world and in story selling and in total cost analysis and all of these things, your one driving force is improving conversion. And if you can do that, then you can see how the math takes over and everybody will have financial freedom faster <clears throat> and at a higher level if they focus on this one business discipline. No, I, I love that discipline. I mean, Mortgage Coach was founded on the concept of just optimizing conversion, being able to meet with the family, Obviously, you need to connect personally. Obviously, you need to follow Todd Duncan's high trust conversation. But then when you present that back to the family and you give them something tangible, again, in today's world, that means digital, something that they can share, something that's interactive, something that you can integrate a video into, it is the ultimate competitive experience. So for every mortgage coach on this call and you're not delivering a total cost analysis, in a high trust conversation every borrower. Again, Todd did a great job of just blowing it up. What is that costing you monthly? What is that costing you yearly? And then of course, what's that costing you over the course of a career? So um, my hope is that this call will be one of those calls that you're like, wow, I took a lot of notes, I made a lot of change, and you create 
a breakthrough. You know, literally you 10x your business. So, so Todd, let's, if, if you want to talk more about conversion, we can. But I do know I want to, I mean, you named Sales Mastery Breakthrough. You know, so, I mean, this is the year of the breakthrough. Um, you know, why, why was that a theme that you picked? You know, and why, why is that what Sales Mastery is about this year? So it's interesting each year as we try to define maybe um, what would be our central focus of the event, what we kind of arrived at heading into our 25th event, which is this year. Hey, two big marks, man. We're at 25 years and Mortgage Coach is at 20. What, a, what an amazing, amazing run that our two companies have had 45 years of collective impact on this industry. Man, oh, man, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> I am super proud of that. And, uh, uh, Launched Mortgage Coach on Sales Mastery 20 years ago, and I am I am certainly looking forward to uh, being part of this year's Mastery. Yeah, pretty incredible. Yeah. yeah. So what we try to do is we try to to take a look at the real world real world experience, and you know we're interacting with thousands of LOs every single month, and we're doing uh, research and lots of diagnostics with lots of companies to kind of unveil. Um, what's happening, where people are meeting the challenge each and every day of how do I succeed. And the reason why we chose Breakthrough is because every single loan originator on the planet has and needs a breakthrough to go to the next level. And what growth is as an originator, as a business owner, C-suite, um, what growth is, is nothing more than a continual series of breakthroughs. Some are smaller, some are larger, but everybody needs to continue to look at a breakthrough that takes them from wherever they were to now a new place of being. Uh, in the High Trust Sales Academy, where I, I spend four days with 125 people a couple times a year, and we go very deep through that owner's manual, one of the things that we ask is, you know, what would your business look like if you could spend 100% of the day doing the one or two things that you're really good at that bring you the greatest financial return and joy? And it's interesting that, that uh, everybody recognizes that that would be like, wow. But the breakthrough that's necessary to get you there is the breakthrough that takes you from your current performance to a new level of performance. And what's interesting is if I go, for example, from $10,000 a month in commissions to maybe $20,000 a month in commissions, the $20,000 in commissions is a result of a breakthrough. And once I have the 20,000, that now becomes a foundation. And now the question has to be asked, okay, if I wanna to go to 30, what does that look like? And what is the breakthrough that I'm gonna to need to get to 30? And breakthroughs um, are, 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 are opportunities that need to be designed by you and by me to architect what we think the next season is for our business, the next month or the next quarter or the next year. So Dave, you know this as well as I do, that, you know, that, that the more we set our sights on greatness, the generally the greater the risk uh, if greatness were easy, everybody would be there. And so when you set your sights on a bigger dream, when you set your sights on a new annual goal, when you set your sights on, you know, building a team, uh, when you set your sights on, you know, things that are larger than your current experience, it, it generally requires a breakthrough, a, a breakthrough in thinking, a breakthrough in your OS a breakthrough in even your emotional core. I mean, one of the biggest breakthroughs that I'm seeing right now that people need to own is the breakthrough of, of moving from promotion to emotion. And it's a, it's a huge breakthrough. Um, the industry is just over inundated with noise from auto marketing and digital marketing and all of this kind of outward bound information overload which is not being read it's not being used it's not be it's not being received effectively and in many cases if not most of them it's creating false walls between what we actually want and a false wall is kind of a, a translucent boundary you see in in uh, you know sci-fi or or if you saw wonder woman you know just the the outer world coming in through that kind of translucent window into uh, Nirvana and, and Paradise Island. Uh, at the end of the day, we need to understand that the only thing that matters 
is emotional connection. If you have emotional connection, you need no promotion. There needs not to be any advertising. There needs not to be any marketing. There needs not to be any of the stuff that this industry has just gotten really good at pushing autopilot and letting it rip. So the breakthrough is if you want conversion to go up, if you want relationships to be legitimate lifetime relationships, if you want a ecosystem of influencers in your database that, that know, love, and trust you to go out into their social circles and find hundreds of people that need to know, love, and trust you and on that client's referral are brought to you, that is the biggest breakthrough you will ever have. So what we're doing is we're focusing and we're betting that emotional connection is more important than digital performance. And we believe very, very deeply that if you have emotional connection, there's less pressure to have digital solutions. We can showcase things digitally. We can show things like total cost analysis. We can do all the cool things. But if we don't have emotional connection, all that is is you know kind of uh, surface noise. It may help, but it won't change your world. So in my mind, it's all about emotion. That's a breakthrough. And so mastery is going to be what LOs, what teams, um, even our outside keynote speakers, how do you create breakthroughs that take you and your ecosystem to the next level? And it's intentional, it's architected, it's purposeful, um, and you got to have them. If you don't have them, you stay where you are and you get behind. I love it, Todd. Well, I put this quote up. We need to move from promotion to emotion. And in that set such a great theme for so many interviews I've had lately where people are talking about, you know, I, I interviewed a realtor and they were talking about how important it is to make it custom, to make it tailored, to make it, give it context. You know, they were complaining about all these, you know, generic marketing emails they get. And they were saying, you know, but when someone shows me they know me, if they care about me and they're delivering a service, I care about them. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, all, all the more time it is for you and I to partner, do more calls like this, and really connect on that, ask the right questions, connect emotionally, homework assignment for everybody, you know, watch this, I think it was a 15-minute Skype interview with Jay Crow, and how he's driving people into his office, how he's, you know, whether they're in his office or not in his office, how he's still having that emotional experience, but leveraging digital you know, making sure that when you're meeting with an agent, you know, you're connecting emotionally, but you're also giving them, you know, content, you know, visual learning. People love to learn through visual learning. So when you can put graphs and charts in front of a family, that's what we do. It's, that, it's, the, it's the digital part of the emotional connection. So, so Todd, what are, what are some other um, tactics or strategies to create a breakthrough? Anything else come to mind? And reminder to everybody on this call, we, we I will bring in some questions from the audience. So Danny, thanks for the advice, but if you have a question, let me know what it is. And anyone else who has a question for Todd today, uh, please post that in the GoToWebinar question area. I think, I think you know, what, what I would add um, about breakthroughs is really the, you know the the need for for everybody in your community and my community um, to sit down and and really have a transparent and authentic conversation um, with themselves. You know, two years ago the theme at Mastery was Ignite, and one of the <clears throat> one of the slides that came up on the screen when I was uh, talking about uh, Ignite on opening night was uh, a slide that simply said "You and the Truth," right and I had a chance to <clears throat> talk with a coaching student uh, last week or so, and you know what I said to this individual is I said, you know, your breakthroughs are going to be predicated on a honest and transparent assessment of where you are and really where you want to go. <clears throat> I think far too often, Dave, people do not stop long enough to really look at where they are, <clears throat> excuse me, and where they want to go. And if you don't do that, then there's no focus on where you need a breakthrough. One of the things that I would say is if you sit down and you, you know, let's go back in history to um, time management 101. Okay, so time management 101 is to sit down and take a look at each day um, by recording a time journal where you're at. 
um, what are you doing that's producing revenue and what are you doing that's not producing revenue. And when you start to look at the list, and it might be the first time you've ever done that kind of journal, you start to realize that there are all these areas that I'm spending my time that, that really aren't producing revenue. And over here, there's a couple things that I did that produced revenue, but it was nowhere near um, as much of the time that I should be spending there. So breakthroughs start when you realize through honest and truthful assessment of where you are and where you would like to be. We do, an, uh, we, do a, uh, we do an assessment in the Hytro Sales Academy live while we're talking. We're producing uh, the results on the screen. It's real live. It's interactive. And the average number of hours three weeks ago when I completed the most recent Hytro Sales Academy of hours per week that LOs were not spending on key income earning opportunities. And those are defined as building referral partner relationships, having pre-qualification conversations and borrower presentations, and achieving and overseeing operational excellence. Those are the three things that make the most money for an LO. When we have this interactive dialogue, the average number of hours per week for this group of 125 LOs that they weren't spending making money was 21 hours. And you look at that and you go, okay, so everybody that is spending time not making revenue needs a breakthrough. And the more amount of time that you're not spending making money, the bigger the breakthroughs you need. And they can be breakthroughs in efficiency. They can be breakthroughs in your own personal skilling up and practicing dialogues and learning game changing questions that elicit emotion. I mean, it can be that. It can be building a team like Danny has done. It can be accelerating um, your investment in, into your database. Um, it can be it can be even specializing. It can it can get to this point where um, you rethink even the things that you think are like category A things I should be doing, and you start to realize that. You know, there are there are, are things that I'm doing that I don't need to do. I need to have somebody that can do those for me and maybe even do them at a higher lev level of efficacy than I'm doing them at. And so there's no there's no square box you can put a breakthrough in. Everybody has a different, you know, kind of place where they are. Everybody has a different feel for where they want to go. Everybody has a different vision for where they want to end up. But in between, wherever you are right now, wherever I am, Dave, wherever you are, there needs to be a series of breakthroughs that cause you to level up and elevate to the next level. So I would sit down and, you know, we do a video replay. So replay the last month or the last week of your business and just old, old school, jot down in your journal or on a pad of paper, where do you think you need breakthroughs? And whatever speaks to your heart the most and whatever you can dollarize as most painful. In other words, if I fix that and I achieve a breakthrough in that, then I'm going to be able to gain financial um, kind of velocity and, and earnings. And if I keep my lifestyle low and I just invest all the money that's coming in, you know, then I'm going to build real true wealth. So wherever the breakthroughs are, they're, they're always generated by you and the truth. And they're always generated by a very clear, um, transparent, vulnerable, authentic assessment of where you are. Beyond that, wow. there's no, there's no, just add water and go for a breakthrough. Everybody's got a different, they're all in a different place and we all need different breakthroughs. You said so many quotes there. I mean, we could, I mean, there's, you know, I can't remember exactly what you said. There's something like breakthroughs are created between you and the truth. Uh, yeah. So could you repeat those three revenue generating activities one more time for everybody? I just had a number of people ask the question and well, I do want to say, Hey, listen to the recording. I'd also like you to just read them off one more time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the three things that are revenue generating, and this is, this is really um, critical for everybody to get one is um, referral partner management. Okay, and so referral partner management is what are we doing daily, weekly, and monthly to deepen our partnerships and monitor the amount of referrals that are coming out of that relationship. You can have a business plan. You can know your numbers till the cows come home. 
But it's interesting, 88% of LOs surveyed have not gotten a commitment from their referral partners on the number of referrals that partner wants to commit to monthly. If we don't know those numbers, we need a breakthrough right there. So referral partner management is number one. Number two is pre-qualification conversations and borrower presentations. Uh, assuming you may have a two-step process there, the borrower presentation is the, the mother load of, of conversion and face-to-face -face, you know, is, is the best way to do that. But pre-qualification conversations and <clears throat> borrower presentations. And the third is operational oversight and excellence. So it's managing the pipe, making sure that we are tracking five stars all the way um, making sure that 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 the inbound noise and what's happening and status and all that is eliminated because we're proactive. Um, those are the three things that make the most money. And I, ironically, it's interesting too that when we ask the question, um, "Are you spending at least seventy-five percent of your day in these three categories?" Ninety-one percent of LOs say no. And so that just begs the question, where do I need a breakthrough for all the stuff that bogs me down and all the things that, that don't allow me to do what brings me joy and where my highest impact can be, and that is making a profound indelible difference in the lives of people. That's it. And by the way, this, by the way, this whole thing on connection, this whole thing on conversion, this whole thing on um, making sure that there is high trust in those dialogues, the reason why we're doing that might be for the obvious, and that is that there's no other way to do it. But the real reason to do it is that if you do it well and you do it at a, a world-class level, <clears throat> that person is going to become a massive influencer for you in the marketplace. And uh, if, you don't, if you don't get that, if you miss that piece, then you miss the whole piece of why we're doing what we're doing. The, the, the whole reason we're doing what we're doing is to create an ecosystem of borrowers that will lay down track for you in the form of referrals and integration into their social, social circles um, as business owners, their staff and their employees. It is, it is still, Dave, shocking to me in the world in which we live. I got a letter from an LO the other day his biggest regret is he first heard about databasing 38 years ago. And last year, last year he finally started databasing. He has no record of buyers <clears throat> for 36 years that he's done loans for. That's just a travesty. So we've got to do a really, really great job because the human being, when it's all said and done and they're in their home and, and we have delivered the goods, we have stepped it up, we've acted as that mortgage advisor, we have architected the, the perfect home loan strategy for them, we've done the total cost analysis, all those things, that puts in motion an ecosystem of referrals that's just off the charts. I love it, I love it, Todd. It's been a great call and we're gonna get to a few questions here. Uh, I did write these down. I hope everybody on this call also took time to write these down. Two things that, you know, just jumped out at me, you know, first, when it comes to the referral marketing management, daily, weekly, monthly. I know this because we have an app called My Nest that's designed to, you know, mortgage coach loan officers talk to realtors about. I know this, that most loan officers don't talk to realtors every single day. And, and some loan officers don't even talk to new realtors every single week. And again, complete differentiator. When I interview the best of the best, they are talking to new realtors every single week and many days a week. And they have those rhythms, if number one, are just consistent. Such a differentiator. And then, and then I do know when it comes to the pre-qual conversation, I mean, everybody's having pre-qual conversations. Not everyone is delivering an awesome borrower presentation with a mortgage for total cost analysis. And I just, again, I know firsthand that when you, when you integrate Todd's high trust selling and you integrate that with the total cost analysis, AE, the most excellent borrower presentation you could possibly deliver, you maximize conversion. So everybody on this call, if you really want to, um, make a breakthrough, I'm willing to bet that 90% of the people on this call, if you just said, I'm going to upgrade the number of realtors I talk to every week, and I'm going to ensure that every single borrower and every single realtor gets my best presentation, that would equal a breakthrough 
for 90% of the people on this call. So, so Todd, let's transition a little bit because, you know, I'm going to be at Mastery this year. Super excited about it. I want to make sure everybody on the call knows about it. Um, so let's talk for a few minutes about that, and then let's field a few questions from the audience. Sure. So I think you already told us about Breakthrough, but if you could just speak to, you know, one of the things I think differentiates you from every other event, it's one, you pick venues that are life-changing and have the ability to be life-changing, and then you orchestrate an educational experience that creates a life-changing experience to create a breakthrough. So walk us through how you've architected this, and maybe there's some things that aren't even on the website yet that we might learn about Sales Mastery. So, um, so everything this year is being run through the filter of does this create a breakthrough? The keynote speaker that we've hired, Peter Sheehan, is arguably one of the best business strategists in the world. Um, this guy has uh, performed time and time again for brand companies that are off the charts. You know, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, um, Cardinal Health. I mean, he, he is unbelievable in terms of business thinking. What he's going to do is he's going to talk about the breakthroughs that we need in business vision and operation to um, have a place in the world in the next 10 years. And if you start to look at digital and, and kind of what the forecasts are around that, it, it, is, uh, it is interesting, uh, Dave, as your, as your curve showed, it's interesting how fast uh, our world is going to change. And, and even within probably 24 months, the way we do loans is going to change dramatically. So Peter Sheehan is in. Um, I have uh, 24 people that I have personally interviewed that have had a breakthrough in their business. And we're gonna talk about how they, how they became aware of the breakthrough how they architected the implementation of the breakthrough, and then what was the result of that breakthrough. Um, we've got some, some keynote speakers that are gonna be coming back uh, talking about um, what breakthroughs are happening in the real estate world. So Tom Ferry, his entire presentation is gonna be about breaking through with agents to a new level of performance. And as you know, Tom, you know, number one real estate trainer in the world, bar none. Um, we have Sue Woodard on our stage this year, and Sue has earned a reputation as a thought leader in the, the business world, and Sue's going to be talking about um, the top 10 breakthroughs that she has watched being a business coach and being a leader in thought in the mortgage business on what that looks like. Um, we've got, uh, I'm going to do five power sessions with uh, technology tools and, and what people are doing to achieve, achieve breakthrough with those sessions. We have, um, for the first time ever in the mastery experience, we have a completely interactive session that is going to be driven by the audience completely. It's going to be crazy. We're going to have 2,500 people in the audience and we're going to have a complete pandemonium uh, breakthrough session on uh, ideas and so on and so forth. And I can't give away any of the surprises on how that's going to be architected, but it's going to be very, very powerful. And of course, you know, Dave, 25 years. I mean, we outgrew the, the Marriott at Desert Springs Resort. We are now relocating the event to San Diego on the harbor. And so we'll be at the Hilton Bayfront this year. And uh, the dates are the 3rd through the 6th of October. And beautiful property right on the water. We got some surprises that we're going to be uh, doing to celebrate our 25 years. But it's going to be a, it's going to be a wonderful experience. I'm, I'm really grateful to the industry. I'm grateful to everybody that's in your tribe, Dave, that has made the Pilgrimage to Mastery uh, an annual deal for them. And I'm just grateful. Uh, we have the longest running event in the history of privately owned events um, in America right now. And that's a very big honor. And it's because of people like you and because of uh, your ecosystem and, and loan reps that want to be their best that we can claim uh, victory to that title. It's kind of cool. That is really cool. And, and by the way, not only is it Mortgage Coach's 25th anniversary, and I, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's been to all 25, but, uh, you know, before I founded Mortgage Coach, I mean, I, I learned how to be a, you know, high-achieving mortgage professional, which, you know, led me to found co-found Mortgage Coach with my partner, Greg Wexler. And, and today, you know, Mortgage Coach is, is obviously much bigger than me, much bigger than Greg. Joe Pertour, our president. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. So can't wait to share that stage. You know, everybody, if you're on this call live, you know, sign up for Sales Mastery. We put a link, you know, as a Mortgage Coach member, there is a, I think it's a $200 discount. Yeah. So you do, need a, you do need a special link for that. Um, so if you're listening to the recording, I will put the link 
in the YouTube description below. But you can also email our support team at mortgage or support at mortgagecoach.com and ask for the discount link for Sales Mastery this year. Um, you know, not only do I urge you to get your ticket, book your room. The rooms do sell out. Well, at least they always have. I don't know, Todd, maybe this venue is so big that we don't have to worry about a, a hotel sellout. But I, I just know um, at past Sales Mastery events, you know, you want to be staying in the well-located room where the venue is going on. So, you know, make sure you book your hotel. Make sure you get Sales Mastery tickets. If you are a mortgage coach that's incredibly high achieving, like Danny, and you'd like to be on stage at Sales Mastery, Todd has not locked down all of the, the breakthrough speakers. And so um, you can either email Todd or email me. I'm Dave at mortgagecoach.com. But if you think you have a breakthrough story as a mortgage coach, and for me to recommend you to Todd, email me. But heck, if you've got a breakthrough story and it's got nothing to do with a mortgage coach, email Todd. Um, but we are still looking for good stories to um, make this an incredible event. So, so Todd, we got five minutes before I field a couple questions from the audience. You know, is there anything else, either one, you want to share about Sales Mastery, or two, just something knowing that we, you know, we just talked for 55 minutes, we've given folks a lot of ideas and thoughts. Is there anything that you want to wrap it up with, either put on your coach's hat and make it actionable, or do you want to throw another – another fastball at everybody? Well, I'll, th I'll throw a fastball at everybody, and um, nobody really knows this, but um, next Monday, the Duncan Group is going through what, to me, is the most exciting transition that we could ever architect, and uh, officially, next week, we launch a brand new company called High Trust, and it's going to be powered by myself and the Duncan Group legacy, but it will not any longer be called the Duncan Group. We are going to commit the next 20 years of our brand to create, helping business leaders in the world create the highest levels of trust in their organization, in their businesses, with their clients, um, bar none. And so we're super, super grateful that we've got a, a new brand launch. And uh, just keep your eyes on it next week. It'll hit the wires and uh, you'll be able to see all the new tools that we have and things that we're offering the industry. But I would say at the end of the day, um, breakthroughs, Dave, is a matter of mindset. And the mindset for a breakthrough has to be um, constant vigilance around what is a better way. There is a better way. What can I do better? What can I do differently? Your best days are ahead of you. My best days are ahead of me, Dave. Your best days and Mortgage Coat's best days are ahead of them, not behind them. And the bottom line is, what are you thinking about the future? And if you're thinking about the future, you will need a series of breakthroughs to get you there. And so just be optimistic about that. The world is waiting for people who think about breakthroughs and get them implemented and play at that level. Love it, love it. So putting on my coaching hat, making this actionable, Hopefully, you'll do what Todd talked about. You'll go through, you know, how are you spending your time? Are they in high value, um, revenue generating opportunities? Be honest. Remember, all you're doing is shooting yourself. You're in the uh, truth. You'll, you'll identify some areas of improvement. I would ask you to now write up a why you need to be better at that. Let's focus on the total cost analysis. Why should every family get a total cost analysis? Write it down in your words. Not my words, not Todd's words, not all the different why worksheets that I have. By the way, we have a why worksheet. So if you go to Mortgage Coach and email support at mortgagecoach.com, get our why worksheet. But write down why you, why you need to do it, and then just hit some reps. You know, get five reps in this week, get 10 reps in next week, get 20 reps as quick as you can. Um, Todd, as always, you deliver massive value. If everybody on this call, vote. Let us know what we did. did. Did we deliver wow value? Did we surpass your expectations with the hour that you spent with us today? If you are a guest on uh, this call and you want to learn more about Mortgage Coach, click the last option. Say, I'd like to get a demo of Mortgage Coach. Um, so, so, Todd, thank you, brother. Look yeah. forward to seeing you in person soon. Uh, it looks like we are getting uh, pretty awesome results on the, on the call here. So, I think everybody dug it. Thanks for voting. Thanks for showing up. And we look forward to seeing you on the – oh, one last thing. To help you improve your digital habits, every Wednesday at 11 o'clock, 
we teach you how to use your mobile phone at a level of mastery. So sign up for that. Go to Mortgage Coach Calendar, sign up for our Mobile Wednesday, and let us show you how to turn your mobile device into a sales competitive advantage. Thank you, Todd. Okay. Really yeah. appreciate you, brother. One more thing, just if you guys uh, want to just stay at the receiving end of this kind of content as well, just uh, check out Todd Duncan TV. It's our brand new uh, YouTube channel, and I'm delivering content once a week there to help you with your high trust strategies. So uh, check that out. Subscribe. Pretty simple request, and it's uh, 10 minutes a week, and good stuff that will help elevate your level of, of high trust in the marketplace. Yeah, and by the way, I put a link to that in chat earlier. I'm showing it on the screen, ToddDuncanTV.com. Check it out. Thanks, everybody. Have an awesome day. Take care.